Okay, marine environment. And I say highlighted, I mean highlighted. This is an enormous topic. It's also a very, very uh, hotly argued topic by various people. Okay, the marine environment is a central component for global life. Okay, 71% of the earth is covered by the seas. And it is really undervalued and under, not understood. I think we know more about space than we do about the bottom of the oceans. The, from a pollution point of view, MARPOL is your main uh, prevention pollution from ships. Now we do fall under these MARPOL rules, okay, as a yacht. Okay, it was introduced by the IMO in 1973, and in 1978 there was a massive protocol change, basically because tankers kept throwing oil into the ocean. I don't know if you know, in 67 and uh, 76 and 77, something like nine tankers went to ground. It was a bit of a disaster for oil spills that couple of years. Marple have set up a bunch of a bunch of annexes. Okay. Each annex has got a specific topic: where and how you can dispose of oil, noxious gases and noxious liquids, harmful packages. Three. Sewage, how can you dump your sewage? Garbage, and lastly, air pollution. Now, most of these are specifically for big ships. If you take sewage, for instance, and although we do fall under it, okay, when you look at the sewage coming off a cruise liner versus the sewage that we pump out when Andrew decides to go to the heads, it's fairly irrelevant. We do not destroy the environment. Where is it? A uh, cruise liner is pumping tons out. So that's where this comes into account. Okay. We obviously don't carry bulk anything. So it doesn't, it's not really relevant for us. However, garbage is Annex 5. Garbage is very relevant to us. Okay. It's broken down into ranges from the shore. So within three miles of the shore, it's illegal to dump. Just take it as everything. Okay. Take it as you can't throw anything over the side. I'll be quite honest. I'll throw orange peel or something like that over the side. Here's a uh, uh, one just to remember. If you have bananas, banana peels, are naturally made not to break down in salt water. They're naturally designed to float from island to island and not break down. So don't throw your banana peels in the water. Okay, so from three to 12 miles, basically don't dump a thing. Same story, there's a bit less on the list, but I wouldn't dump anything. Beyond 12 miles, you could dump food stuff, sewage, that sort of thing. I mean, and again, it's more relevant to big, big ships. And never ever dump plastic, because plastic does not de deteriorate. Um, there are some quite hefty fines. You can get a Oh, quite a whopping great fine if somebody th decides to, that you're going to throw stuff over. I mean, my tips are from the coast to 25 miles plus, I keep all my gash. And those who are salesmen, we know we do that. I'll throw some food stuff over the side that's going to get eaten. It's not going to be a problem. But I keep paper, plastic, tins, you name it. I don't throw anything over. It's just not worth it. Um, whenever bunkering, and we all know what bunkering is, it's fueling up. Always have a cleaning kit available ready. I mean, in our case, it might just be a, a thing of degreaser and some cloths, but have it there ready just in case. Um, okay, what do I think about black tank wood water? I mean, black tank pump out. Okay, I compare it to my water maker. If I'm far enough offshore, to run my water maker, 
I would be happy to empty my black tank. Okay? The thinking is that if you're far enough offshore to use your water maker and have clean water, the amount of water around will absorb your black tank pump out very, very quickly. If you're too close inshore and you've got sand and what have you, don't do it. It's going to wash up on the beach. Okay. And then just one little note, marine rubbish is called gash, guys. Some of you don't know it. It's a nice word. So if you're talking about rubbish on board, it's gash. Marine rubbish. Okay, flotsam, flotsam and jetsam. Flotsam. It's debris not de deliberately thrown. So shipwrecks, accidents, things washed off over the side, things that are not deliberately thrown over the side are flotsam. Jetsam, things that were deliberately thrown over the side. That doesn't mean to say that you're a terrible crew and you hate the world and you're gonna throw everything over the side. It might well be because of distress. You're dumping stuff because you're sinking and you're trying to lighten your load. It's a very good way of saving your boat. Okay. That is not illegal. It's a mayday situation. Your boat is sinking. You may throw stuff over the side if it is a distress situation. You, uh, you may jettison. Legan, pronounced L I G A N, Legan. Okay. This refers to. Um, goods that are cast overboard or sunk to the ocean floor but are tied or otherwise got a floating marker on them okay it's quite important for smaller boats okay something happens you take your fender and you just write owner salvage on it and tie it there okay during Carl's week in 96 three dragons the type of boat sank in shallow water off Egypt Point all three were recovered, okay, only one by the owner, because he'd put their owner salvage on a fender. The other two, basically pirates came out and said, there we go, we'll help ourselves. They recovered the boats and sold them. So if something happens and you've lost something over the side, drop a small kedge with owner salvage on it, and there you go, it's yours. And then derelict, which is the last of the four statuses at sea, is basically yeah, you've lost it it's gone into deep water and recovering it is gone there's no chance okay so that's derelict um i'm not going to get into marine law about salvage because there's insurances there's all sorts of other stuff but if you go and dive a wreck don't go and rip stuff off it unless you know you can salvage because you can get fined okay a little bit about sailing etiquette Again, marine environment, sailing etiquette, okay? It's our duty as mariners as a whole to keep our seas in pristine condition up, okay? Make sure you completely understand the rules of stand on, give way, the steering rules, that sort of thing. There's nothing worse than going along saying, I'm stand on vessel, and you've got a guy who's doing a bareback charter and he hasn't read up on his rules before he does it, okay? And also, if you're on a powerboat or a larger vessel, watch your wake, okay? Watch what your wake does behind you. On a sailboat, there's almost no wake, it's not a problem, but some powerboats throw up a hell of a lot of wake, especially when they're not planing, okay? You're responsible for what your wake does and the damage it does, okay? This is not just etiquette, it is also bits of maritime law, okay? So you go past a vessel and you create damage to that vessel, you are liable to be sued, okay? So apart from the fact that if you're sitting on anchor or you're just sitting there and somebody comes past with a massive wake and throws your lunch everywhere and spills a beer and what have you, you get a bit irate anyway. But, you know, so watch what's behind you. It's a favorite places like Miami. The guys go off to these sandbars. They have a nice party. They drink all day. Then they motor back from the sandbars. 
flat out and kick up stupid wakes all over the place. It's not very nice. Okay, not to mention, and I've put this here specifically, big wakes causes damages to shorelines, especially in places like sandbars, where it's a it's a quite a delicate environment. They don't usually have big waves hitting them. So your wake, which is unnatural, causes problems. Okay, when overtaking a slow vessel, okay, give them loads of room. There's no harm in giving them loads of room. It's just polite. Okay, and if someone's overtaking you, I know the rules say, hold your course and speed. There's no harm in going, okay, get on the radio, listen, I'll slow down so you can get round before that headland. But again, get on the radio, just let them pass quickly. It stops collision potentials. Get on the radio. You pump out etiquette, okay? There's nothing worse than people ignore this. This guy's just going for a swim, and then somebody next door here decides he's gonna pump out as he dives in the water. That's not very nice, okay? Use pump out stations. Um, find in local areas, Croatia is one of them, by the way, Rich, um, there are very strict rules about pump out very strict because obviously they're trying to keep their waters as nice as possible yeah i think you've got to be four miles offshore yeah otherwise you use an on land pump out station yeah so you go tie up they plug into your boat and they pump you out okay um next one always help fellow sailors okay if you see another vessel in trouble or somebody's having trouble getting something done okay do your best to help them out Okay, but don't do it at the expense of the safety of your own vessel and crew. Guys, that's very important. Don't put your own vessel and crew in danger to help somebody else out. Okay, always be polite, even if you're annoyed with the other skipper. Okay, it's important. If you, even if you're annoyed with them, be polite on the radio. Keep being polite even if you think he's a complete idiot and doing idiot things. Avoid foul language at any cost. Um, in the racing rules, you can be disqualified for foul language between boats. So if you call one of your racing competitors a effing idiot, he can, call, he can literally disqualify you under rule one and rule 69 of the racing rules. Okay, and always be ready to assist in an emergency if called upon. Okay, it can often be as simple as you just doing a radio relay. You're, somebody's having trouble in the middle of the channel, their VHF doesn't come to land, you know, you're on the coast, you might well be asked to relay between the two. Okay, and then your clubs, they've got their own rules, abide by them. So, Royal Yacht Squadron, if you arrive after seven o'clock at night, you are expected to wear blazer and tie and your shoes may not be salty. Okay, so don't, don't break the rules, I won't invite you back. Okay. Most yacht clubs, just to give you a quick idea, nobody allowed, most yacht clubs don't allow you to wear singlets, vests. You have to be wearing some sort of over your shoulders. Okay, and most yacht, let, yacht clubs don't allow you to be barefoot. You've got to be wearing something on your feet. So that's just two that most yacht clubs are like that. Okay, what happens with our sailing etiquette in a mayday? Okay, you always inform the skipper. Doesn't matter if you're on deck, you always, always, always get the skipper on deck. Okay, if you happen to be by a chart table, you don't leave the chart table, you just keep recording all the communication. Now I've said to my crew, it doesn't matter if you're filling in one line, you can fill in five, six, eight, ten lines of your logbook. It doesn't matter if it's terribly, you're trying to get every single piece of information down. So your etiquette is just to record all radio communication. Okay. The next thing is keep off the VHF radio, especially on channel 16. 
okay because that is an emergency channel the moment a mayday is called it remains emergency channel until you hear mayday for me okay your skipper and if it's you must inform the crew as to what they're going to be doing okay don't let people just run around blindly and not know what they're up to okay if you're the one having an emergency give people jobs you know what we've got on Bermuda we've got that muster list and before we leave port everybody knows in an emergency what their job is I'm grabbing water I'm grabbing log books I'm grabbing helping launch or life rafts whatever it is we have that pre-arranged so that we know what we're doing in an emergency don't panic guys just breathe deeply you know panic just leads to all sorts of problems okay again gives you a bit of an idea that's it guys that's 10 sessions over the last 10 weeks been great fun I've enjoyed doing it I hope you guys have enjoyed getting them and watching them